Do you ever feel like you're failing at helping your kids with their math work? You're not alone and you're not a failure. I'm gonna tell you five things that you can start doing right now that are gonna help you help your kids in math. Hi, I'm Jennifer and I'm the bleeping teacher. The bleeping teacher is a Navy veteran currently teaching GED classes in a prison. This video is not intended for children under 13 or adults who feel the need to clutch their pearls when they hear profanity. If at any time you find yourself clutching your pearls, please note that the emergency exit is located at the top of your screen where you can click out of the video. Number five, become familiar with mathematical practices. Mathematical practices are habits that you should be developing with your children and encouraging them to use on a daily basis. They're not just mumbo jumbo made up by some math guru to make our lives miserable. They are legit. I'm gonna show you some posters that I purchased back when I taught third grade. I still use them today because they are that good. I reached out to Miss Donna at Math Coach's Corner and she granted me permission to use her posters for this video. I'm going to include the link to her Teachers Pay Teachers page in the description because she really is a math wizard. Pop over and check out her stuff. I recommend this website to everyone because the content creators on here really know their shit in their subject areas. Make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. Sometimes your child is going to struggle in trying to figure out how to solve a problem. Shit, sometimes you're gonna be sitting right there struggling with them. Y'all just give each other a little struggle hug and keep at it because you have to persevere. The last thing you want to model to your child is that they should be giving up when shit got too hard. Buckle down, try a different approach. Reason abstractly and quantitatively. Your child should be able to go back and forth from symbols to numbers and from images to words. When they're first starting out, they're gonna model their mathematical thinking with drawings and objects. They're gonna build from there to adding numbers and then words. Eventually, your sweet baby is gonna be switching back and forth as effortlessly as they destroy the living room right after you've cleaned it. Construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others. Heather did weight training for 55 minutes before a 25 minute run. Her Facebook post stated that she worked out for an hour and 10 minutes. Identify Heather's mistake. Well, her first mistake was coming at me with that body shame and bullshit. Nobody cares how long you worked out, Heather. But I guess technically her mistake is that she forgot to carry the one over to the tens column. This practice right here is my absolute favorite because I've come to realize that children and inmates absolutely love to prove why someone is wrong. The second I tell them to prove it, every single one of them turns into a jailhouse lawyer and they are pleading their case. As a teacher, it is a really beautiful thing to watch. As someone with a twisted sense of humor, it is hilarious to watch them arguing over math. But to date, we've had zero math-related shankings. Model with mathematics. Hands-on interaction with math is one of the best ways for your little one to start truly understanding the concepts that they're gonna be learning. You need to drive home the fact that math isn't something that we're only gonna do for a certain time of day or a certain assignment. It's going to be a huge part of their everyday life. Use appropriate tools strategically. When it comes to tools, let them choose which one they want to use. Let them go through some trial and error of figuring out which tool is the best one for the job. I wish the hell somebody would tell me that I need to use my table saw when I know that my miter saw is going to do the job. Give them plenty of tools to choose from and just see where it goes. They could end up inventing a whole new math tool and become a millionaire all because you let them f*** up a few times when they were doing their math work. Attend to precision. We want to strive for our little learner to do things the most efficient way. Sure, you can paint a whole room with a two inch paintbrush, but a roller is going to bang that shit out a lot faster. Your child can use repeated addition to find a sum, but multiplying is more efficient. We also want to ensure that our kiddo is using appropriate units and labels. If they're working with inches, they need to write inches. Doesn't matter if it's feet, quarts, centimeters, miles, always write the unit. Now we're gonna come back to talking more about vocabulary later in the video. Look for and make use of structure. Identifying patterns is gonna be one of the first steps that's going to lead them into mental math later. Being aware of patterns is gonna make math come more naturally for them, so it's a skill that we really need to work on early. 
Like now, look for and express regularity in repeated reasoning. Again, we're really going to drive home the fact that recognizing patterns in math is going to lead to mental math fluency. Instead of counting each one of these little ass squares one at a time, encourage them to look for a pattern with the rows. Once they realize they can skip count by 10, it's going to make it much easier and faster for them. Number four, talk about math. Math shouldn't be an acquaintance that only comes over when you invite it. It should be like your cousin that shows up unannounced with all their badass kids while you're trying to cook lunch. I am that cousin. There are countless opportunities throughout your day for you to engage in a conversation about math with your kids. When you're shopping, when you're planning your budget, even when you're driving in your car, there are opportunities to work math into a conversation. Unless your daily routine involves cooking meth, start a conversation about math. Number three, let them be the teacher. Any teacher will tell you that there is no better way to truly understand something than having to teach it to someone else. I never had a deep understanding of fractions until I had to teach it to third graders. And I never realized how beautiful a number line is until I had to prove to inmates that a negative number has a positive absolute value. Allow your child to teach you or anyone else what it is that they're learning. Let them pull all the stuffed animals out of the room and set them up on the couch. Let them teach an audience what they are learning. It's going to drive home whatever skill you're working on. When you're working with your children, get some of the answers wrong on purpose. See if they notice, see if they can correct you. You're still going to be a rock star to them if you pretend to be bad at math every once in a while, just to make sure they're really paying attention. Number two, talk the talk. Let's talk about socioeconomic bias in the way questions are worded, aka poor people talk. I saw it in public school classrooms and I see it now in a prison classroom. And believe me, I speak that shit fluently. Low income people of all ethnicities do not understand math terminology because they are not exposed to it outside of a classroom. This has got to change and as parents, we're the only ones who can change it. One of my coworkers told me recently that she has a student that didn't know what the word sum meant. How in the hell can we expect our children to be functioning and productive members of society when they don't even know basic ass math vocabulary? If you're willing to put in the work and learn this, you are setting your child up for success and they will be able to crush math. I have tons of math vocabulary cards that I've purchased over the years and they're laminated and I keep them readily available, but you don't have to spend money to become more fluent in math. You can easily make math flashcards at home for free. The math vocabulary that your child is going to be learning is going to be embedded in the lesson itself. So make sure you're paying attention to what the directions are saying and what the questions themselves are saying. Look for any words that you're not familiar with and familiarize yourself with them. You need to know what it's asking so you can help your child. Learn these terms and use them whenever you can. I'm not saying you have to walk around talking like a stuffy old math professor, but you do need to make the effort to talk the talk. Hey, one of y'all come over here to help me figure out which three-dimensional shape this charcoal briquette closely resembles. The number one thing that you can do right now to help your child with math is to stay positive about it. Children are like cosmic little vampires that feed off of the energy that we put out. Math is going to piss you off sometimes and it may even make you question some of your life choices like homeschooling, but never let your child know that. If you constantly talk about how much you don't like math, your child is going to feel like they have to stand in solidarity with you. They're gonna hate that shit right along with you. Even if you hate math with the power of the burning sun, you need to fake it for your kids. We're parents. We fake a lot of stuff for our kids. Add this to the list. Yeah, I want to see how fast you can run. Oh, God. I hope he never has to run from bullies. They're going to kill him. They're going to get him. You are so fast. I'm calling the Olympics right now. Are you ready? Whether you are homeschooling or just doing homework, help your kids now so I don't have to help them later. Why isn't this shit working? Oh, huh. Do you feel like you're failing? Charcoal briquette. Charcoal briquette. <laughs>